Hello there, IELTS students. Welcome to IELTS Podcast. You no longer have to worry, fret, or panic about IELTS because we are here to guide you through this test jungle. Enjoy these IELTS tutorials, and if you need more help or want to access the famous online course, you can visit us at IELTSpodcast.com. Hello, and welcome to another IELTS podcast. Um, if my voice is unfamiliar to you, well, uh, my name is Rob. I've been teaching English now for oof, many years. <laughs> I don't want to remember how many years, in fact. I'm also an ex-IELTS examiner. And today I thought it would be very interesting for us to talk about a topic which is coming up in both the written exams, particularly, of course, uh, writing task two, and in the speaking exam. And, and that topic is all about renewable energy. Now, what we're going to do is, is, is to look at some ideas about this topic, so a little bit of grammar too, and, and some vocabulary, and maybe if we've got time, some sample answers, both from the writing and the uh, speaking test. Of course, I mean, where am I getting this from? Remember, if you sign up to this amazing service that, that Ben has, has put up on IELTS Podcast, the, the essay checker, get into that. Or sign yourself up for that. Send off your essays to the team that are going to check them um, with rapid speed. I think that the, the, the turnover is something like 48 hours and you get the, the feedback back on your, on, on your errors and so on and so forth. Um, he tells me that, that they're getting about 2,000 essays a day in there. And once you do sign up and, and get this fantastic service, which is going to save you money in the long run because, of course, you're going to get very, very good immediate feedback on your um, your standards in, in, in writing. You can also get for free this, this amazing ebook all about these different um, topic ideas. Uh, that's what it's called, IELTS Topic and Ideas ebook, and you can get it for free on IELTSpodcast.com. So what I'm going to do today is go through some of the, um, or just one, in fact, of those topics today, renewable energy. Renewable energy, of course, it's going to come up um, more often than not. Than not in, in, in recent times, we've heard so much about it, the global warming, the issues that are, we're facing, so much terrible things happening in the world with climate change and so on and so forth. So, obviously, for us as, as, as IELTS test takers, I think it's very important to... to collect ideas together like Ben has done in, in this particular ebook no um, and, and also of course look at particular vocabulary and grammar points we, we can get into when we're talking about any particular topic this time um, it's going to be um, the third conditional you know conditional sentences are always very well appreciated by examiners they love them they think oh my god this person can really write well remember the third conditional is that structure that we use to talk about situations in the past we can't change the past the past is the past so we can obviously uh, refer to these things um, and, 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 and use a, a, a fairly complicated structure which begins with if and then with had and the past participle of our verb and then in the main clause we can have different possibilities you know would have happened or we can talk about possibilities could have or might have for example, the classic one, if I had studied more, I would have passed the exam. But in reality, I didn't pass the exam because I didn't study. So I can't change the past. But if I had, I would have. Or, of course, I could also say, I might have. It was possible. I could have passed the exam. It was a possibility. So we'll be looking at some of those sentences today in, 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 in the context of renewable energy. Okay, now... If I were taking IELTS, which luckily I'm not, because that's a very difficult example for, <laughs> for me, we could also, of course, think of um, collecting ideas together. What are the things 
uh, that we could argue in favor of renewable energy or maybe against it. In the book, for example, let's, let's go over some of them. Of course, I mean, we've got to reduce our dependence on fossil fuels. Less oil, less coal. We can use, obviously, things like wind or sun, solar energy, for example. So we can say things like, um, making notes about it, uh, well, of course, it lasts forever. It's a sustainable and inexhaustible source of power. And... It can create jobs in the, in the area, what we often call green jobs, no? So we can say things like using renewable energy can potentially create numerous green jobs. And obviously at the same time, um, we reduce the use of, of uh, water, for example, in power plants. For example, it minimizes water usage compared to traditional power plants. So, there are other things we can mention as well. On the other hand, what about the negative aspects of this, the drawbacks of renewing, uh, of using renewable energy? Um, well, if it's wind and sun, particularly in some countries like the UK, where England, where I come from, of course, well, we can't trust the weather. Um, days are often very grey and it rains, so maybe renewable energy sources are often dependent on weather conditions. If the weather's bad, you cannot use, you know, for example, solar panels. Um, also, the, the amount of space it occupies particularly wind farms and things like that. Uh, renewable energy technologies sometimes perhaps occupy very large areas of land. And, and, and obviously, you know, you, you can think of um, other negative aspects. Uh, people talk about the use of things like um, uh, using natural things like biomass. Um, uh, at the same time, we've read, of course, that that still contributes to what they call carbon emissions. I mean, there's an awful lot of information about this, isn't there? Not only in this ebook, which you can get online for free if you sign up, but also, of course, in everything we read these days, newspapers, magazines, it's on the news constantly. It is an extraordinarily important topic for our times, to be honest with you, and you, you know that to be true. So, pros and cons regarding renewable energy. Now, coming on from that, I mean, of course, it's always a very, very good idea, no matter what topic we're thinking of. And today, our topic is renewable energy, to, to, to look at... Um, lists of vocabulary. Of course, we have to use these things in context. That's extremely important. But specific vocabulary collocations and phrases. Collocations, remember, words that frequently go together. So I've mentioned one or two already, I think. Um, but we can add a lot more, no? Um, we can talk about our carbon footprints. We can talk about greenhouse gas emissions, sustainable development, renewable resources, and, and, and obviously things like solar panels, solar power, uh, hydroelectric power, um, biomass, biomass energy. Now, these things are, are available not only in this book, but also in other sources to collect them, make a note of them, use them in sentences, use them if possible if you're practicing for the speaking test in conversation. Get comfortable with them. Feel that you're using them in, in the correct ways. Now, Another important point that, that, that comes up, I think, in, in, in all aisles is, is the need to be accurate and the need to use vocabulary in contexts where you, the examiner sees that not only can you use regular vocabulary, but also that your specialized vocabulary in any topic area is worth a high band score. Um, let's look at one or two. All of these examples, of course, in, in our book, and I'll look at two or three of them right now, are, are, are using the third conditional. As I said, impressing the examiner with our use of, 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 of complex grammar 
um, being accurate in grammar is very, very important. It's one of the first things the examiner notices. Because, of course, most teachers, we've been brought up with, you know, grammar and grammar rules. We, we, it's our bread and butter, if you like. And it's your bread and butter, too. You know, it's, it's the basic thing of, of, of language. Um, so it's much better to be accurate <laughs> as, as possible, as accurate as possible. So let's look at one or two here. We've got... Um, uh, if we had focused on energy efficiency earlier, uh, we wouldn't be facing such severe climate I issues. We wouldn't be. So remember, that idea is, is, is a, a verb um, in the first part, of course, using our um, past participle with had. So it's an example of the past perfect in, in grammatical terms, isn't it? If we had focused on energy efficiency earlier but we didn't that's the idea we can't change the past what would be the consequence now we wouldn't be facing we wouldn't be now compare that to this other sentence where it's a little bit different from the grammatical point of view the first part no it's again that part with if if more countries had committed to reducing greenhouse gas emissions, but they didn't, but if they had, what might have happened? Again, but it didn't. Listen to this. Global warming might not have been such an important issue. Might not have been. It might have, but might not have. Now, that's co a complex idea because we're saying if something had not happened in the past, maybe something else might not have happened. Just think about that for a second. In, <laughs> in terms of, of, of what we're putting together there and also the words and the grammar we're using. So look at those sentences, study them. Yeah? Let's, let, let's take one more example because another little trick we can do which will really impress <laughs> in, in IELTS or anywhere in fact is when we, we leave out the if and we invert the part, part of the verb and the subject. So uh, listen to this one. Had we invested more in renewable resources like solar power and wind turbines, that's the first part of the sentence, had we invested, instead of saying if we had invested, we could do it in the first two. If more countries had committed, had more countries committed to, <laughs> or in the first one too, if we had focused on energy efficiency, had we focused on energy efficiency? Notice what we're doing there. We're putting the had right at the beginning and omitting the if. The, the, the meaning is exactly the same. It's just an alternative way of presenting this third conditional. Let me read the rest of this sentence and read the first part again so we get the whole feeling of it. Had we invested more in renewable resources like solar power and wind turbines, we might have reduced our dependence on fossil fuels. It's again a, a might one, isn't it? We might have it. It could have. It could have happened. In all of those, we could replace might with could. We could have reduced. What's the difference? Well, some people say might is a little more tentative, is more speculative than could. But don't worry too much about that. We can use one or the other. Okay, so how are you doing with your IELTS anyway? Um, are you using the resources that you've got there on IELTSpodcast.com? I've mentioned the, um, the, the essay checker. Um, you can sign up to that and then get all this stuff for free, this extra materials, which are really, really good. I've been reading through them. I'm very impressed with them, in fact. Um, you can also, of course, a little extra cost. I don't talk about costs. I don't know much about that. But you can go for the premium version where your essays are checked and you get the really professional, sophisticated uh, breakdown of your different uh, skills, device.
divided into different parts, you know, your task response, your grammatical accuracy, your um, range of vocabulary, your cohesion and your coherence, all marked with different scores to, 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 to judge how you're getting on. That's what I like about it. You know, it's that instant feedback you're going to get uh, to tell you the state of your progress, which is pretty difficult to get anywhere else, I think. You know, it, it, it's hard, that kind of stuff, to get all the time. And, 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 and the, these kind of tools you're going to get on, on IELTS uh, podcast at the moment, I think are really first class. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm saying that not because it makes any difference to me. I'm, I'm just ha um, helping out Ben occasionally with some of these podcasts and I quite enjoy doing them. But, I, you know, it, it's good to see that there is a, a, a website which offers, you know, really, 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 really good help to, to, to students all over the world that want to get a good score in, 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 the, um, in the test. So uh, coming back to this, the, yeah, there's a whole list. There are very interesting sentences with if. Now, um, what about applying this in, in terms of, of uh, let's say, the writing and speaking test? Questions on writing. Well, here's one that comes from this. It's a kind of a, um, you know, advantages and disadvantages mixed up with to what extent do you agree? I mean, listen to this. Discuss the benefits and drawbacks of renewable energy. To what extent do you think it can replace fossil, fossil fuels? So we're, we're, we're mixing two things there. They're asking your opinion. To what extent do you think it can replace fossil fuels? And also discussing the pros and cons, the benefits and drawbacks of renewable energy. Advantages, disadvantages, benefits and drawbacks of renewable energy. It's a classic four paragraph uh, uh, answer I've got here. I don't want to read the whole thing. I mean, the first paragraph summarizes the points. Renewable energy harnessed from sustainable resources such as wind, sunlight and water is regarded as a potential solution to our global energy crisis. Okay, yeah, 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 possible benefits, drawbacks. However, while its benefits are substantial, there are also drawbacks to its widespread adoption. The second paragraph um, talks about advantages. That's cool. That's a very good idea. The third paragraph, of course, goes on to the um, challenges and possible drawbacks that uh, renewable energy technologies represent. And then um, in the final paragraph, in this particular case, and it's a good, it's a good way of doing it, I think, the writer then introduces his or her opinions. For example, um, while renewable, this is the final paragraph, huh? while renewable energy has its challenges, its potential benefits in terms of environmental sustainability and energy security cannot be overstated. So it's in favor. It develops that in the second sentence of this last paragraph. While it might not be feasible to entirely replace fossil fuels at present, strategic investment and technological advancements could substantially increase the share of renewable energy in the global energy mix. And then it ends with a third conditional. <laughs> if we had prioritized renewable energy decades ago, we might not be grappling with the dire consequences of climate change today. Believe me, I mean, that's a very, very nice paragraph. Three sentences. The first sentence presents the, 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 the general opinion that, that uh, renewable energy is more beneficial than, than detrimental. The second sentence uh, suggests there are certain problems to be overcome, but at the same time, it's worth investing in um, uh, f uh, renewable energy sources. And the final sentence offers that kind of a farewell to the whole topic by uh, reflecting on what could have been in the past uh, and a possible consequence for today. We might not be. Hmm? It's well worth, believe me, checking this out yourselves online. Obviously, these essays that we read in uh, here on, on IELTS podcast in this particular ebook they're beautifully done they're nicely done it's perfect English we are working our own way you as test takers towards being able to write well in English 
we are not expecting, nobody expects anybody to write like this without a lot of exposure to the language and a lot of practice. But use these essays to take out structures, take out sentences, use them, study them, look at the vocabulary, use your dictionaries, physical dictionaries, online dictionaries, to, to look at the vocabulary, look at the words. There's a whole world of, of interesting things in this particular text. Let's finish off by, by, by briefly looking at you know, some possible speaking um, uh, test uh, questions and answers. Okay, particularly in part three, I mean, perhaps an examiner uh, might ask you one or two questions, you know. Um, let's take one or two. Um, perhaps uh, things like... Um, uh, what about individuals? How, how can individual people, uh, you know, contribute to the use of renewable energy? Or maybe um, a question there about uh, your own country. Is renewable energy common in your country? Let's take that one first. It's often that kind of beginning of part three in, in the speaking test when the examiner wants to make you feel at home, feel comfortable talking about your own country perhaps before going on to more abstract topics. Is renewable energy common in your country? Here's a possible answer. Well, to be honest, yes and no. Um, yeah, there's been a growing trend towards renewable energy in recent years, but mm, it hasn't been uniform across the country. I mean, some areas are, are using renewables, I mean, but particularly where there are resources like sunlight or wind, but um, in other areas, especially in the industrial part, which has always been you know, traditionally dependent on coal, nothing much has happened, to be honest. Um, if there had been you know, more efforts before, perhaps we might have seen by now a, a more widespread adoption of renewable energies. But to be honest with you, uh, there's a lot to be done. Um, that's one possible one. And, and, and another one, well, how about um, that one I mentioned before, how can individuals contribute to the use of renewable energy? Well, yeah, uh, that's an interesting question, maybe in, in different ways, you know, I mean, um, uh, solar panels, I mean, I, I know people who've, who've bought houses and, and, and they've installed solar panels on, on the roofs. And and, and it reduces their energy bills and also also helps, obviously, to re to decrease reliance on, on fossil fuels. And um, well, there's also, of course, you know, buying electric cars, which or using public transport or bicycles, all that helps to reduce your carbon footprint. But um, as, as well as, you know, doing your bit in the community. I mean, it, it's difficult in some societies, I know, because particularly where I live, you know, everything is dependent on the motor car. Uh, that's what it's all about. I mean, people don't really believe, well, they don't want to believe the, what, what, what's happening in the world about the need to, to change the way that we, we move around, that we, 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 we should, you know, be much more aware of, of, of these things. So, I mean, and maybe in my country and others too, if, if people had started, you know, doing these little things earlier, taking these steps earlier, um, maybe the impact would have been significant, but it's perhaps too late in some places, no? Okay, well, I don't want to end on that pessimistic note. Let's be, <laughs> let's be optimistic. I mean, You've got an awful lot of tools here. I mean, make use of these tools. That's what I would say. I mean, sign up today if you've got the chance, though, or as soon as you can to, the, to this essay checker and, 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 and get into it and, and check out the, this, this, this e-book online. There are two e-books, actually. This is from e-book one and there's also e-book two. It's a very, very, very useful source of information for all of you. Um, apart from that, you've got to keep going, keep moving. Be confident and just get in touch with IELTSpodcast.com whenever you are in need of help, okay? So that's all for me today. Take good care of yourselves. Bye-bye. IELTSpodcast.com.